Pan Asian Cruisers are the newest tech tree line to be added to Legends, and largely I would say they have quickly replaced the Italian tech tree line as being the most difficult cruiser line to play. This comes down to a couple reasons, one being that they are the most fragile cruisers currently in World of Warships. Aside from that though, the line is characterized by smoke screens, very good concealment, and lots of small destroyer caliber guns. Oh, and deep water torpedoes with reload boosters. You've heard the term support cruiser, I'm sure, well prepared to meet the supportiest support cruisers in the game. I don't know how else to say this, but this line will really rely on a strong team with good spotting and or tanking for you to survive and to do well. Given your very low HP pool, very light armor and propensity to have modules knocked such as your engines, this happens quite frequently, these ships 100% cannot hold up to enemy fire. They rely on concealment, smoke screens and fighting from cover. Now the problem can arise when you don't have teammates to spot targets for you. This is fresh on my mind, of course, with a series of recent games. Being completely alone fighting off a flank, Harbin and the Shumfan have a really great ability to deal damage with support. They are quite fun to play with a good team. I would suggest though that you play these ships with a division mate like we are in this game in the background. These ships are interesting, they're all built by other navies so you can see the various influences. British built ships such as the Shunking at tier 4 and the Ramat at tier 5, the American built Shumfan, it's in Atlanta, and Soviet Harbin. The gun characteristics of the respective navies can come in as well, so you can imagine the floaty shells of the Atlanta style ship at tier 6 and the much faster shell velocity of the Harbin at tier 7. The game in the background I've decided to show in its entirety due to this line being new and unique, so hopefully it'll give you a decent idea of how to play these higher tier ships at least, such as the Harbin. So let's check out some ship builds. I basically used the same modules throughout aiming systems, propulsion, concealment, and for the Harbin I chose gun range because she has a 13.2 kilometer base gun range, so it feels like a necessity at tier 7. For the commander, Shin is our only current designated cruiser commander. His base trait makes you more tanky while in smoke, and he has two special skills. Blind Justice is going to buff torpedo range and cruiser concealment, and Torpedo Chaos gives an extra torpedo reload booster and it's going to improve its cooldown. Personally, I buffed fire chance as much as I could because the guns are only 130 millimeters at tier 7 on the Harbin and 127 millimeters at tier 6 with the Chiffon. They don't pin a ton of armor, so you end up relying on fires for gun damage. Also, no EOP with these commanders, so you can imagine just how many shatters you're going to be dealing with. Other than that, I did a double concealment build with Makawa and Swirsky, and the results were very, very satisfying. 8.8 km detection on the tier 6 Shumfon and 9.3 km on the Harbin. These are some very, very sneaky ships. Looking at the stats for these boats, and every single tier will be in dead last when it comes to HP. Just take a gander at the Harbin for a quick little perspective. 26,500. You can start to imagine just how quickly these ships can get erased. Shimfon is also right below the flint at the bottom of the boards. And to look at the armor, things don't get a lot better. Shimfon is armored like Atlanta, 13 millimeters everywhere. Basically, this can be overmatched by 203 millimeter guns, and the Harbin at tier 7 is not a lot better with 16 millimeters of armor. And the Citadel is big and well above the waterline. Tanking shots against enemy ships, cruisers, or battleships is not really much of an option for these boats. The HE DPM at tier 7 for the Harbin is respectable, 9th place overall, hanging around B43 in the Tektri Shapayev. Fires per minute is also decent enough in the upper to middle part of the pack. Keep in mind though, as the HE DPM goes, the shells are going to be shattering a lot. 130mm is a bit smaller than 152s, which would be something that we would see on like the Cleveland or the Shapayev. The AP doesn't feel amazing by any means, I guess you can still use it on broadsides or very very close targets. The really fun part of these ships when it comes down to dealing damage is the deep water torpedoes. Keep in mind, they cannot hit destroyers because destroyer drafts are very shallow, but deep water torpedoes are very stealthy and hard for larger enemy ships to see and avoid. They also deal a good amount of damage, 17,633 at tier 6, it's some of the best torpedo alpha potential for cruisers. The reload boosters just double all of this. Basically, you can flood areas with tons of torpedoes and deny access to enemies. I see this as something to 
actually spec into rather than just going all guns. The torpedoes can be very, very powerful. With the good concealment and the torps, you can often circle around, launching all of your torpedoes, using the reload booster, and repeating. With Harbin, you can flood an area with 24 torpedoes in less than a minute. So it makes it a very serious threat to larger ships and ships pushing into you. Except destroyers. And of course, the reload booster is helpful if things go south and you end up getting pushed by battleships. <laughs> Obviously, brawling is not recommended. That's the last thing you want to do. But in moments of desperation or hey, you're left alone on your flank, which seems to happen frequently, you might not have any other options. The AA, it's not something to tout, to be honest. Now, the Ramat and the Chamfon both come with DFAA stock. Here's a little example of DFAA against a Parcival squadron. I wouldn't count on it. Harbin, in order to have DFAA, you have to lose your heals. You can decide if that's worth it or not for you, keeping in mind you have the worst cruiser heals at the tier. They only bring back around 3,000 health by my figures. In terms of maneuverability, it's really not that bad up the whole line. Average speeds, great turning circles, decent rudder shift times, but given your squishy nature, I wouldn't worry about agile builds. All it takes is one wrong move to get deleted. Pushing towards damage output and concealment really seems to be the best way to go, I would say, seeing as how you can rely on smoke screens and cover. The concealment is top notch. Harbin is the third best at tier 7, and similarly, Shimfon, Ramat, and Shaking have pretty good concealment ratings. Overall, to have success in these ships, it's going to come down to pretty good positioning. Head for clumps of islands near objective points. Given the relative short ranges of the guns, you're going to have to be a little closer than maybe you would want to in other cruisers. I found this especially true of the tier 6 Chamfon. She has Atlantis shell ballistics. They are painfully slow, and it makes it difficult to hit enemies at longer ranges. These ships excel at defense when you allow enemies to push into you. So try to set yourself up in places where you can flood lanes with torpedoes and thwart off enemy attacks. It's a ship you have to be patient in. Sometimes that's not my strong suit. If you've ever watched one of my streams, you know that. But yeah, honestly, you just have to be patient in these ships. Higher tiers can be a little bit frustrating because oftentimes red teams just don't push. You know, they kite the whole time, even if they're getting triple capped. And in games like that, you're probably not going to have a lot of fun and they might not be bangers. But when everything aligns, these ships can dole out a ton of punishment. The smoke screens are great. Not having sonar, though, it really hurts. It hurts in keeping you safe from destroyers and their torpedoes. And it also hurts in hunting destroyers. I would just suggest, if you're going to park and smoke, make sure there's really nothing with torpedoes around, such as destroyers or IJN cruisers with long-range torps, and as a rule of thumb, I would try not to sit broadside. The firing angles are fine on most of these ships, so you can position yourself to make yourself a smaller profile. In my experience, high damage, like in the game here, happens a lot. But it doesn't mean you're going to win. I would say the carry potential is pretty low to mediocre at best. The consumable suite just doesn't help you win games that much. It helps keep you alive, sure, but not having radar or sonar means you have a poor ability to hunt destroyers. You can't really tank damage. You can't do a lot of spotting. The torpedo reload is pretty long in the tooth, so you're not necessarily a destroyer sailing around. However, I would say if you can survive the first part of the matches, you can become infinitely more powerful in mid to late games, just like all cruisers. Then you can move around more freely, go to where you're needed, and help your team out. So with the Alaska Sunk, let's check in on this game. It is not looking good, let me tell you. <laughs> in order to win this one, we're going to have to stop the Vanguard from capping. Basically going to have to 1v1 and out here in the open water. Vanguard, in terms of effective HP, it's the tankiest tier 7 battleship in the game. So good luck to us. We're going to juke, we're going to dodge, and we're just going to try to farm this guy out. Fighting from the open water is usually a scary proposition, so yeah, it can be done. Especially 1v1, you know, it's more feasible. But if there are more than one ship shooting at you, best of luck. If you're struggling with the line in the lower tiers, hang in there because it gets a lot better at Harbin. This is the jewel in the line. I think it comes down to this ship being 
a Soviet design and having a lot better shell trajectory. It makes it much, much easier to play this ship. Not to mention that at lower tiers, cruisers are just harder to play. Tier 5, for example. Less modules, no heals, not to mention Tier 5 battleships. They are the king. California, Hayuga, things like that. But hang in there, Tier 7, it gets a lot, lot better. This game in the Harbin, 10% fire chance. We still got a decent amount of fires and a decent amount of damage, but we do shatter a lot of shells with 130 millimeter guns. That's one of the drawbacks of these ships and not having EOP. I don't know if we'll get that eventually on a commander. I'm not sure. Some nations still don't have it like France and uh, ships like the Bayar suffer, but uh, we will see. Now, coming in the future at the next update, we're going to get the Sejong, I think it is called, and it basically looks like a big, scary Atlanta. It's going to come with a stock DPM of 235,000 and 16 torpedoes, kind of like the Minotaur. And I think this is a perfect addition to Tier 8 when it gets here because we are severely lacking in light cruisers at that tier. Currently, there's only the Neptune. So Sejong will be extremely squishy, of course, just like all the other ships in this line with a very small HP pool of around 30,000 at Tier 8. But again, I'm looking forward to that. I think that'll be a pretty fun boat. Overall, I'm going to say this line of ships has a very high skill ceiling. If you're new to cruiser play, I would say start somewhere else. Start with a different line. You'll probably have a better transition. This is definitely one of the hardest in the game to play. Once you get the hang of them though, it is a really fun line and very exciting. You never know when you might explode. <laughs> Again, take it from me, you're going to enjoy yourself a lot more if you bring a div when you're playing these ships. So the Vanguard got a pretty nasty HE salvo on us there. We had to DC it. You saw that he knocked our engine. Well, I think he's about to do it again, if I remember correctly. That is something I noticed about these ships. Most of the time that I took an H HE or AP salvo, I lost my engine quite a lot in this ship. So be prepared for that. Basically save your damage cons for that instance, because I died several times just not having an engine. This game, as you can probably tell, is a loss. A little bit of a heartbreaking loss. We're not going to get the chance to kill Kudazov. He's too far away, he has too much health, and I don't have an engine. But overall, it was a fun game, and GG to everyone involved. If you guys could do me a huge favor, hit the like button, as that would greatly help me out, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Leave me a comment down below on how your grind is going with the Pan-Asian cruisers. I would love to hear from you. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.